magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun And welcome to the Secret Kindergarten Radio Show. I'm your host, Gino. And let me say, towards the end of this half hour of the Secret Kindergarten, you are going to need one raisin. Yes, just one little raisin. I hope you have one at home. Go and grab a snack of raisins. Enjoy the show. Hold on to one little raisin till the end of the show. Okay? So go get that raisin. I'm going to put some music on. Definitely get a raisin. Did you have your breakfast? Did you get a good night's sleep? Then you'll have lots of energy. Get up, get on your feet. Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands. creates a lot of heat so let's stir up the molecules get up get on your feet get up and shake 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 your hands jump 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 up and down turn 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 around reach way up high and sit back down your hands together now and clap along with me just like the sun that shines you have a lot of energy get up and shake 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 your hands jump 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 up and down turn 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 around reach way up high and sit back Sunlight and light to heat, it changes all the time. Moving, working, doing, energy's a busy guy. Get up and shake, 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 shake your hands. Jump, jump, jump up and down. Turn, 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 turn around. Reach way up high and sit back down. of energy they're always on the go running jumping dancing you need energy to grow get up and shake 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 your hands jump 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 up and down turn 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 around reach way up high and sit back down reach to the sky and sit back Energy, 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 energy. Pretty little shamrocks were growing on the ground. Along came a leprechaun, he didn't make a sound. He picked a little shamrock and jumped up in a tree. Then he put it in his pocket. And he slapped his little knees And he clapped his tiny hands And he stamped his little feet And he said, this will bring a little luck to me Oats, peas, beans and bars grow oats peas beans and barley grow do you or i or anyone know how oats peas beans 
and barley grow. First the farmer sows his seed, stands up tall and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow, oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans and barley grow? Next, the farmer waters the ground, watches the sunshine all around, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans and barley grow? Next, the farmer hoes the weeds, stands up tall and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans and barley grow? As the farmer harvests his seed, stands up tall and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans and barley grow? Time it is. <laughs> hey, it's nature time. Ever nature time? We are going to talk about something spiky, something I likey. <laughs> We're going to talk about a cactus plant. Okay. There are some plants that don't need much water and are found in the desert. <whistles> like the common cactus plants. The cactus plant is famous for its ability to survive in harsh environments such as the desert where the supply of water is less and the heat is tremendous. However, there are some plants in the desert that have the ability to store water inside them. This way they get to live for a long time. There are several spiky plants that can do so. Cactus flowers are also very common, but they are only found in regions that have less rainfall as they may die with excess water. So there you go, they need the desert and the desert needs them. There are several flowering, pl for flowering plants that also come under the cactus family. And they come in various colours and these days they are often seen decorating houses. Have you seen a cactus before? Do you have a cactus? We had a cactus and we cut it down and we put it away inside and about a year later we've still got it and we're still going to plant it and it's going to be able to grow. It's very easy to take care of cactus plants because they can survive in dry environments and they can take the direct sunlight. The cactus family utilize their root system. The water absorbed by the cactus is then used for days in case of no rainfall and drier environments. And inside the cactus, you're going to find a lot of water in there. Cactuses are so cool and they're very spiky. And you know, that's that. That's the end of our nature section. 
Now, we're going to hear a story. So buckle up. I hope you've still got your raisin. Hold on to that raisin, okay? This story is called Sleeping Beauty in the Wood. The Sleeping Beauty in the Wood. Once upon a time there lived a king and queen who were most miserable because they had no children. But when a lovely baby girl was born to them, they were two of the happiest people in the world. And in order to make all things as propitious as possible for the little princess, they invited seven fairies who lived in the kingdom to be her godmothers. When the christening ceremony was over, there was a magnificent banquet given for the fairies. Before each of them was laid a plate of massive gold, and a case, also of massive gold, containing a spoon, a fork, and a knife, all of the same precious metal, and richly studded with diamonds and rubies. But just as everybody was seated at the table, who should enter but an old fairy who had not been invited because for more than fifty years she had been shut up in a tower and was supposed to be either dead or enchanted. The king immediately commanded that a chair should be placed for her at the table, but he could not offer her a golden plate and case, for only seven had been made for the seven fairies. The unreasonable old creature considered herself insulted and began to mutter frightful threats between her teeth. The youngest of the fairies, hearing this, concealed herself behind the tapestry in order to be the last to speak and so perhaps prevent any harm being done to the little princess. Meanwhile, the godmothers began to bestow their gifts. One said, My godchild shall be the most beautiful girl in the whole world. The second added, And she shall have the disposition of an angel. The third said, I give her the gift of perfect grace and graciousness. The fourth added, And she shall dance like a sylph. The fifth said, She shall sing like a nightingale. The sixth added, She shall excel in playing on every sort of musical instrument. Then came the turn of the old fairy, who screamed like a cockatoo, while her head shook more from rage than from age. The princess shall pierce her hand with a spindle and shall die. These dreadful words made the whole company Every one shudder, and there was no one there who was not drowned in tears. At that moment the youngest fairy appeared from behind the tapestry and said sweetly, Do not weep, your majesties. Your daughter will not die. It is true that I have not power enough to entirely undo the evil that my elder sister has done. The princess will hurt her hand with a spindle, but instead of dying, she will fall asleep for a hundred years, and then a royal prince will come and waken her. The king, hoping to prevent this calamity, forbade any person in the kingdom either to spin or even to keep a spindle in the house. Anyone who disobeyed was to be punished with death. Sixteen years after this, the king and queen went with their court to a castle in the country, when it happened that the young princess, wandering curiously from room to room, mounted to the top of a tower. There she found an old woman sitting alone before her wheel. This old woman had never heard that the king had forbidden anyone to spin. "'What are you doing, my good mother?' asked the princess." "'I am spinning, my beautiful child,' answered the old woman. "'Oh, how pretty it is!' exclaimed the princess. "'How do you do it? Give me that so I may see if I can do it as well.' And as she spoke, she took the spindle so eagerly and so quickly that it pierced her hand, and she sank fainting to the floor. The poor old woman, in the greatest distress, cried for help. People came hurrying from all sides. They dashed water on the princess. They unlaced her robes. They bathed her temples with perfumes. But she did not move. Then the king, who, hearing the commotion, was come into the tower room, remembered the malediction of the old fairy. He perceived that the misfortune was a thing that had to come about, since the fairies had foretold it. He caused the princess to be carried to the most splendid apartment in the castle, 
and to be laid on a couch of down and on pillows of down embroidered with gold and silver. Her eyes were closed, but her soft breathing showed that she was not dead. Then, too, her cheeks were flushed a delicate rose color, and her lips were like coral. She seemed a sleeping angel, she was so beautiful. The kind fairy, who had saved the princess's life, was in the kingdom of Mataquin, twelve thousand miles away, but the king instantly sent word of the misfortune by a little dwarf who traveled in seven-league boots, which are boots that pass over seven leagues at each step, and she arrived directly at the castle in a chariot of fire drawn by dragons. She approved of all that the king had done, but being exceedingly wise, she knew that the poor princess would be in a pitiable condition when at the end of a hundred years she awoke to find herself alone in that old castle. She knew of but one thing to do, and she did it. At a wave of her wand, everyone fell asleep. Ladies of honor, waiting maids, squires, pages, stewards, cooks, scullions, porters, footmen, every breathing thing even the horses in the stables with the grooms the mastiffs in the courtyard and little poofy the princess's lapdog who was nestling beside her on the couch all slept the spits full of partridges over the fire and even the fire itself waited silently to serve their mistress when she should wake and need them only the king and queen were left to kiss their darling child and go away from the castle. The king forbade anyone to approach the place, but this command was not necessary, for within a quarter of an hour there was grown up around the castle park such a vast wood whose trees, great and small, were so interlaced with briars and thorns that neither man nor beast could pass through. It was plain that the fairy had arranged matters after fairy fashion, taking care that the young princess should not be disturbed while she slept. When the hundred years were gone, a king, not of the family of the princess, reigned over the land. One day his son was hunting near the fairy wood, and asked what were those turrets he saw rising above the trees. People told him everything that they had heard. One said that it was an enchanted castle. Another said that all the witches in the country held their revels there. The most common belief, however, seemed to be that it was the dwelling place of an ogre who carried off all the children he could catch and devoured them at his leisure, for no one could follow him as only he could pass through the wood. While the prince was lost in wonder at these tales, an old peasant approached him and said, "'Your Highness,' More than fifty years ago, I heard my father say that in yonder castle was the most beautiful princess on earth, and that she would sleep a hundred years, and then be wakened by the son of a king, and that she would marry him. That was enough to set the prince on fire for the adventure. In fact, he felt in his heart that he was the chosen one. He did not delay for an instant. No sooner had he taken a step toward the wood than the trees, great and small, and the thorns and briars, disentangled themselves and opened a path. He walked toward the castle, which stood at the end of a broad avenue. He saw, with surprise, that none of his attendants had been able to follow him, for the wood had closed again behind him, but all the same he went on boldly. He entered a spacious outer court, where a person less brave than he would have been paralyzed by fear. A death-like silence reigned, and many dead men lay stretched upon the ground. But the prince saw, at second glance, that the man had only the appearance of being dead, that, indeed, they were really men-at-arms who had fallen asleep with their half-emptied wine-glasses beside them. He ascended the stairway. He entered an antechamber where the guard, ranged in line, with their muskets on their shoulders, were snoring contentedly. He crossed a presence chamber where many lords and ladies were sleeping, some standing and some sitting. Then he found himself in a magnificent apartment where on a couch, whose curtains were lifted, slept a young princess, as lovely as if she had strayed from paradise. The prince knelt beside her and pressed his lips on her white hand that lay on the coverlet. 
the spell was broken. The princess opened her eyes, and looking at the prince as if he was no stranger, said, It is you, my prince. I know you, for the fairy has sent me such happy dreams in order that I might know the one who should free me from enchantment. Then they talked together. Each had so much to say. The prince forgot the flight of time, and the princess certainly did. It was so long since she had talked with anyone. Meanwhile, the whole castle had awakened when the princess did, and all the people had returned to their regular duties. They were naturally half-starved. Dinner was prepared. Then the maid of honor, who was as hungry as the others, and who really had difficulty to keep her voice from being as sharp as her appetite, went to the princess's apartment and said in a gentle tone, "'Pardon, your highness, but dinner is served.' The princess was superbly dressed, and the prince was careful not to say that her robe was like that of his great-grandmother. He did not find her any less beautiful for all that. They dined in the hall of mirrors, and were served by the pages and ladies-in-waiting of the princess. The violins and hot-boys played delightfully, considering that they had lain untouched for a hundred years. After dinner, the prince and princess were married in the chapel of the castle and on the death of the prince's father, which occurred soon after the marriage, the prince and princess reigned happily over all that land. Okay, we're going to pick up a raisin. Before we eat it, we're going to think about how it got from the grapevine into our hands. All right? Let's think of the worms that nourish the soil. Thank you, worms. Let's think of the sun and rain that fed the vines. Thank you, nature. We're going to think of the farmers who took care of the vines and the harvested grapes. Thank you, farmers. We're going to think of the workers who harvested the grapes, put them out to dry, and boxed them up as raisins. Thank you, workers! And we're going to think of the truck drivers who drove the raisins to the store. Thank you, truck drivers! We're going to think of the person who bought the raisins and brought them to you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> You're welcome. Now let's eat the raisin. Yum, 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 yum. And that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for listening to The Secret Kindergarten. And we'll see you at the next one.